Hey, it's Sam. And John. And you can watch new episodes of our latest podcast, OKOP, where we tell the funniest freaking stories on the internet. Like someone making billions off a of plane RuneScape? Oh, who make those Bitcoin billies. Or the doctor accidentally putting the mistress as the emergency contact instead of the wife. Hey, yo, that sounds like a family feud. Do not tell Steve Harvey. But the point is, we got some bangers. Yes, so if you want to laugh and occasionally cringe, listen now for free wherever you get your podcasts. The Reynolds Aluminum Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The Reynolds Metals Company, makers of Reynolds Aluminum, presents Fibber McGee and Molly transcribed with Bill Thompson, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick Legrand, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Keith Fowler and directed by music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. We hope you have all answered your Christmas seal letter and used those Christmas seals on all your gifts and greeting cards. This is the time to help stamp out TB. And this is the season for the Reynolds Metals Company to extend to you the very best of all good wishes. That best wish is peace on Earth. Much of Reynolds' expanding aluminum production now goes to the defense of the nation, the defense of our free world. But the ultimate aim is peace always. And the great destiny of light, strong, rust-proof Reynolds aluminum lies in peaceful progress. The Reynolds Metals Company looks forward to the day when all aluminum production can be turned to constructive uses. In a future when the inspired hope of Christmas shall be realized. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Christmas Eve in Wistful Vista, and big plans are underway this afternoon. Because tonight, a certain lonely bachelor named Dr. Gamble is going to have a surprise party thrown at him by a couple of spreaders of Christmas cheer named Fibber McGee and Molly. So I got all the other guys lined up for the party, too, Molly. I told him what to do and what to bring to Doc's house when, 7.30. Well, good. I'm so glad we decided to give Dr. Gamble this big surprise party, dearie. Yeah, he'll be the most surprised big party in town. <laughs> you know, Doc must get pretty lonesome being a bachelor. Nothing in his stocking for Christmas but holes. <laughs> well, you know, when I heard that his housekeeper had gone home for the holidays, I knew we had to do something. Yeah. We couldn't let the poor lad spend Christmas Eve alone wandering around that empty house. Let's face it, Tootsie. No house with Doc Gamble in it is an empty house. <laughs> Why, when he walks into the Elks Club, he fills the room like cigar smoke. Well, even so. Did you ever notice when he walks into our living room how the grand piano steps aside? <laughs> no. <laughs> Me either, but ain't it a funny idea? <laughs> now, look, about the party tonight. Uh, what time am I supposed to call and get him away from home? Oh, about 7 o'clock. You give him a phony name and tell him you live way out of town and you got an upset stomach. Old Doc just loves upset stomach. <laughs> He'd go ten miles to see one if he had to crawl there on his own. <laughs> well, I hate to fool him, but it, it's in a good cause. Say, did you manage to get hold of his extra door key all right? Oh, sure. Me and Ollie did that down at the Elks Club. We knew he had to get his pants off, see, so we spilled a bucket of water on him. Well, yeah. heavenly days, wouldn't a glass of water have been enough? You ever notice the size of Doc's britches, kid? <laughs> glass of water and them limousine-type seat covers wouldn't hardly make a wet spot. <laughs> Anyhow, all he took the pants down to the furnace room and swiped the key, see? Doc huddled around in a pair of red and white striped shorts. <laughs> the wonder he didn't catch cold. Boy, you should have seen him. Or maybe you shouldn't have. <laughs> From the back, he looked like a Siamese white elephant wearing peppermint bloomers. <laughs> no, he was the most... Uh-oh, watch it, McGee. He's coming up the walk right now. Oh, yeah, there he is. Good old Doc. Bless his little fat waddle. <laughs> oh, he's unduck. Hold it. Come in. Good morning, Dr. Gamble. Good morning, my dear. Hi, opossum puss. <laughs> Hi, rumple bucket. <laughs> what are you doing out walking the streets? You on the lam from the medical board again? Yes, they found out I've been your doctor all these years, and they want to arrest me for maintaining a nuisance. <laughs> Very funny, George. You pretty busy, Doctor, the holidays and all? Oh, yes. Christmas Eve is starting early this year, Molly. 
I've already had one call from an amateur Santa Claus suffering from the flu. Yeah? How'd he catch it? Didn't catch it. He got stuck in it. Oh. <laughs> Fellow planned to surprise his children tonight, so he tried a dry run this afternoon. <laughs> Drier than he thought. Yeah. Boy, I hope you didn't try to go in after him. Not me. I sent a bricklayer. Yeah. Then I've had three calls so far from frantic mothers complaining that their children's tongues have turned blue. Oh, my goodness. What causes that? Licking Christmas tree ornaments. Yeah. They never seem to lick the red ones. I just swab off the tongue and check the nose and ears for tinsel. <laughs> <laughs> what a racket he's got, Molly. Probably calls that a tinselectomy. <laughs> Charge 20 bucks for it. <laughs> my gosh, I don't know now how you... Now, McGee, don't talk like that. Well, he upsets my stomach. Your stomach gets upset every time you look in the mirror, loud lip. Well... And I don't blame it a bit. Well... But I didn't come here to discuss your insides, which I hate anyhow. <laughs> I came to bring a gift. Well, where is it? Where's the Forgot gift? I got and left it at the office. Oh. I'll bring it over tomorrow. So long. So long, Lenny. Bye, Doctor. Isn't he sweet, McGee? Yeah, good old Doc. He's got a heart of gold way down deep inside of that tub of blubber. <laughs> Someplace. <laughs> hey, did I tell you the extra present I got for him? No, what'd you get? Something nice? Yeah, you know when I and Doc went quail shooting? Yes, last week. Well, I took what Doc shot to a taxidermist and had it stuffed. Oh, he should like that. Yeah, he'll have the only house in Wistful Vista with a stuffed cabbage on the wall. <laughs> So that's what he hit. That's what he hit. I thought he... Come in. Good morning, Ollie. Well, good morning, missus. And have one yourself, McGee. Hi, Ollie. How are you getting along with the food for Doc's party? Oh, you stand, McGee. The missus is cooking away like 60. Good. I'll bring the stuff when I get there, but the missus will be a little late. Oh, oh, anything wrong, Ollie? No. First, she has to go to school tonight to see little Sven and little Ollie in the Christmas play. Oh, that's nice. What will they be in the play? Angels, missus. Oh. <laughs> but all day, they act like they come from the wrong address. <laughs> they cut up a lot, do they? McGee, they're used plain murder. Yeah. <laughs> Their mama makes angel suits for them out of my old night shorts, and then she makes wings out of wire and hooks them on their shoulders. That's where the wings sprout from, McGee. I know, I know. Well, how do I know what you know? <laughs> Anyway, she hooks the wings on their shoulders and the kids start jumping around and the wire slips down. Uh -oh. You wouldn't believe where the wings sprouted from then. <laughs> I got a fair idea. <laughs> well, I tell you, you're mighty lucky to have those children, Ollie. Yeah. Just think what a lonely life Dr. Gamble has, being a bachelor. Yeah, I, I often thank the doctor at Christmas, missus. All by himself in that big house. No little voices on Christmas morning. No little feet running down the stairs. You're right. Oh, my missus. A house seemed like a home. It must seem used like heaven. <laughs> I'll see you there at 7.30. So long, both you. Bye, Ollie. Hi, Ollie. You know, I'm glad Mrs. Swenson is fixing food for the party. She's one of the best cooks in town. Oh, no better than you are, kiddo. Maybe you don't think old Dad notices them things, but to me, you're the queen of the skillet. Why, thank you, dearie. There ain't many women could cook a cheap lamb shank so it tastes like the best pork ham. <laughs> you buy low on the lamb and make it seem like we're eating high on the hog. Why, <laughs> McGee, you overwhelm me. Yeah, me too. And I love it, because I don't get... Come in. Hi, daughter. Hi, Johnny. Hello there, kid. Hello, Mr. Oldtimer. Hi, Oldtimer. Did you get the tree and the holly for Doc's party tonight? Oh, took care of, Johnny. Good. I was up early this morning and off to the woods at the crack of dawn with my new scout axe and my old battle axe. <laughs> old battle axe? My girlfriend, Bessie. <laughs> I took her along to help me pick the holly. Oh. Bessie just loves them crazy red berries. <laughs> Uh, is she coming to the party with you tonight? No, she can't make it, daughter. Her sister Essie is visiting her for Christmas. She's an ostrich, Essie is. An ostrich? Yep, married an Austrian. Oh. <laughs> Feller always has a glass in one hand and another glass screwed in his eye. Yeah, he sounds like a duke or maybe a count. Might be a duke, Johnny, but the son of a gun is no count. <laughs> Three dollars from Bessie yesterday just to get his spats half sold. <laughs> well, anyhow, I hope you got a nice tree for the doctor's house, Mr. Oldtimer. Oh, it's a beauty, daughter. And I know trees. 
I come from a long line of tree experts. Hmm. In fact, all of Papa's folks spent most of their time hanging around big trees. Yeah. <laughs> by their necks, probably. <laughs> no, by their tails. <laughs> That's my favorite joke, Johnny. I'll tell it at the party tonight. Yeah, so long, please. kids. So long. <laughs> Billy Mills and the orchestra, and a special arrangement of some familiar Christmas melodies. wait to get over to Doc's and get started putting up the tree and everything. Almost time to go, ain't it? Pretty near. Good. I'm just pasting Christmas seals on his presents. Mm -hmm. I put the fruitcake and the root beer out in the front hall. What do you got there? Oh, books. I've been looking through my own special treasures to see if there wasn't something else I could give old Doc for Christmas. These books he'll love. Well, that's a generous thought. Yeah. What are they, dearie? All my favorites. Here's Tarzan's other ape. <laughs> Here's the Rover Boys with King Farouk. <laughs> Here's Tom Swift and his mechanical lint picker. <laughs> ah, these are the prize books of the litter. I've seen the way you keep your books, dearie, and litter is the word, all right. <laughs> ah, you're sweet, though. You are fond of the doctor, aren't you? Ah, sure, I love every ton of him. <laughs> Me and old Doc hit it off the first time I looked into his eyes and he looked down my throat. That was a long time ago. Ah, uh, but I'll never forget it. It was ten years ago or more. we just come to Wistful Vista then and I had a backache and I saw his sign, Dr. George Gamble. I went in and told Doc what was wrong and he smiled a friendly smile and put a friendly hand on my shoulder and something clicked. Friendship. No, my spine. <laughs> he gave me a wrench that darn near busted my liliac. Cured my backache, though. So I told him just to mail me a bill and I'd send him a check. <clears throat> and I will, too, one of these days. <laughs> Believe me, kiddo, when I make a promise, a promise... Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. It's about time you got here. We're almost ready to go to Doc. Did you bring the decorations, Mr. Wilcox? Where are they? Where are they? Out in the car, Molly. Got a briefcase full. Oh, you shouldn't put Christmas tree ornaments in a briefcase. You'll smash them. No, oh, not these, Molly. I'm going to dress up that tree and dress up the room with Reynolds Wrap, that beautiful gleaming aluminum foil. Oh, for the... I should have bought candy cane. Oh, now, wait a minute. Look, pal. Reynolds Wrap can be used for Christmas decorations in dozens of ways. For instance, uh, you can wrap things in it and hang them on the tree. Yeah, what kind of things you wrap in it? Nuts, pal. Well, nuts to you, too. <laughs> Oh, no, no. Walnuts, pal. Yeah, I knew what you mean. <laughs> Reynolds wrap turns them into beautiful, shining ornaments. Oh? It's almost magical the way that gleaming foil dresses up a house at Christmas. Well, I wouldn't have a Christmas without Reynolds wrap. Come to think of it, I guess we wouldn't either. Ah, <laughs> uh, you can tie shining bows of it on your Christmas wreath. You can drape it over the mantle. You can spread it out under the punch bowl. Oh. Uh... I'll take the old-fashioned Christmas for mine with Uncle Dennis spread out under the punch bowl. Now, never mind, Uncle Dennis. I think your Reynolds wrap decorations sound lovely, Mr. Wilcox. Ah, uh, but you haven't heard my best idea, Molly. I'm going to build a winter scene under Doc's tree, some artificial snow, some evergreen twigs, and a sheet of Reynolds wrap to make a sparkling lake. No, no, Junior. No lake. No lake? Why? No like. 
Oh. Oh, so there can't be a lake because you know like. Right. A lake ain't a lake unless it's got water in it. So, no lake. But wait a minute. A Reynolds Wrap Lake is better than a lake with water in it. Why? No leak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, leak or no leak, I know like, so no lake. Pal, hmm? I'm going to make a Reynolds Wrap Lake <clears throat> with no leak. If you know like, you know what you can do? What? No look. <laughs> Telling you, Mr. Wilcox. I intend to make full use of Reynolds Wrap, made by the world's largest producer of aluminum foil, the Reynolds Metals Company. Everybody should get an extra supply for the holidays because okay, it's okay, okay. was terrific. As the farmer said to the hired man when the haystack got ten feet tall, that's enough pitch. <laughs> that's well, now you boys pack the car, and I'll call the doctor now and get him out of the house. Yeah, you pack the car, Junior. I'll, I'll get the number for you, Mom. Okay, okay. Hello, operator. Give me the residence of Dr. George Gamble, Wistful Vista 2030. Is that you, Mert? Oh, <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? Says eh? What say, Mert? Your kid brother. Became a popper last week. I didn't even know he was married. Oh, he ain't. He, he just got a better job at the popcorn factory. <laughs> he used to be a shucker. Now he's a popper. <laughs> How's that, Mert? No, it didn't go so good here either. <laughs> She's ringing Doc now. Grab the phone, kiddo, and do your stuff. Okay, dearie. Hello? Hello. Is uh, Dr. Gimble there? This is Dr. Gamble. Well, doctor, this is Mrs. Wearywart. <laughs> Would you come to my house right away? Oh, I got a misery in my stomach. Well, where do you live, Mrs. Uh... Weary Wart. Oh. I'm out on the old ox road about eight miles as the crow flies. If and it's a young crow. <laughs> and your house, Mrs. Uh... Weary Wart. Yeah. You can't miss the house. It's brown with a hole in the roof where we used to have a lightning rod. <laughs> I wish you'd hurry, Doctor. The misery in my stomach is getting, oh, real chronic. All right, I'll leave at once. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Uh... It's still weary, Ward. <laughs> goodbye, Dr. Gimble. Well, he's leaving now, boy. Good. Come on, Junior. Grab the root beer and let's get started for Doc's house. <laughs> Harlow, get that tinsel on the tree there, boy. Come on, old-timer, get them ornaments hung. Doc, oh, Doc ain't here, is he? No, dearie, relax. Yeah. This is a surprise party for Doc, remember? Yeah, well, keep working, fellas. We haven't got all night. We couldn't stood it all night. Hand me the hammer, Wilcox. Yeah, hand him the hammer. Get there. Hey, Wimp, you can... Oh, Wimp ain't here either, is he? Doggone it, why ain't Wimp here? Oh, well, you're lucky, I guess. <laughs> Maybe he couldn't get away, Johnny. Well, he better get away. We all got work to do here. <laughs> Wendy, you start doing yours, Wendy. What do you mean? I'm working every minute, Oli. I'm thinking. <laughs> and that, Oli, is work. Well, certainly. My guy, somebody's got to boss this deal. Come on, you guys. Let's get this job done here. Okay, boss. Hand me some more lights. I'll put them up. I'll put the lights on the tree. I want it done right. Where are they? On the floor, boss. Right behind you. Oh, yeah. oh McGee, you stepped all over it. Well, if that ain't the dad rat it. What lunkhead left them Christmas tree lights on the floor? You did, boss. Hmm. <laughs> well, why didn't somebody pick them up? I can't think of everything. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Take it easy, boss. Well, We've got plenty of lights. Yeah. Hey, what if Doc comes home before we're through? Oh, I got that all covered, boy. I got Teeny, the kid down the street, watching for him. Soon as Doc's car turns down this block, she'll be... Hey, here's Wallace Wimple. Well... well hello, Wallace. Hold the ladder, will you? Hello, Mr. Wimple. Hello, folks. <laughs> Ooh, look at the popcorn bulbs. Uh-uh. They're for later, Mr. Wimple. Yeah, where you been, boy? You're late. Well, uh, Sweetie Face and I had a little discussion about where to hang our holly wreaths. Oh? I wanted to hang them in the windows, and she wanted to hang them on the door. I suppose she won the argument. No, we compromised. Oh, that's fine. She hung one on the door, and I hung one on the window, and then she hung one on me. <laughs> Just looking at those popcorn balls makes me hungry. <laughs> well, here, Mr. Wimble, no use torturing yourself. Yeah. I'll put them up here on the mantel where you can't see them. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, come on, Wimp, get to work. Grab that last string of Christmas tree lights there, boy. Test the bulbs, will you? All righty. 
I'll try a red one first. Eh? No, no, not in your mouth. I said test them. Oh, I thought you said taste them. <laughs> I didn't think it'd have much flavor to them. Although I once tried a Brittle Bill Flicker's egg, and it looked just like a light bulb. How'd it taste? Like a light bulb. <laughs> I'd rather have popcorn bulbs. Look, Vim, you fellas caught out the yak yak and hand them lights up here. I just need one more spring for the top. Ah, oh, the tree looks just beautiful, doesn't it, McGee? Right, thanks, missus. All the gifts stacked under it. And yeah, and the beautiful Reynolds wrap, that pure aluminum foil spread out. All there. right, you guys, all right. Let's check this whole thing off now. And be sure we haven't overlooked anything. Wilcox, all the decorations up? Right. Molly, all the food laid out? Root beer ready? Right. Old timer, you got the ornaments and tinsel on the tree? Right. Holy, you got the lights all on the tree? Oh, this is you silly. You're looking right at it, McGee. <laughs> Ah, just look around this room, Molly. When I think what a wonderful thing I'm doing for old Doc for Christmas, it just gives me a warm feeling all over. That's the way I am about popcorn balls. <laughs> well, I tell you, the doctor will love us, dearie. Yeah, and he ought to be here soon, oughtn't he? Right, now look, here's what we do, you guys. As soon as we hear he's coming, we'll douse all the lights in here, see? I took the bulb out of the hall light, pal. Good. When Doc comes in and turns on the hall switch, it won't light, see? And he'll stand there muttering and stuttering to himself, and then we'll turn on the Christmas tree and we'll all holler, Merry Christmas. Hey, 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 Mr. McGee, oh. he's coming, he's coming. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Teeny, okay, Teeny, you stay mm -hmm. here now. Quick, douse the lights. I'll stand by the tree, McGee, and turn it on when we're ready. Yeah. I'll, I'll stand over here. I'll stand here by the popcorn bar. <laughs> Oh, McGee, this is so exciting. I know the doctor will just love it. Yeah, shh. Now, quiet, everybody. Stay with me, T. People that call me out on Christmas Eve, of all the galls, roam around the country for three hours and never did fight. Okay, Oli, turn on the tree. Here we go. Merry Christmas, oh, Doc! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Oh. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Doc! Well, gee whiz, a, a tree. Yeah. <laughs> Presents. McGee and Molly and Wimp and Oli and... <laughs> Ah, oh, fellas, you shouldn't have done it. Look at that tree and all the presents. Yeah, sure. I got to tell you, Doctor, the whole idea was McGee's. Yeah. All we did was use the bladder things, like doing the work, you know. <laughs> McGee, he thought it off. Yes, he did, Doctor. <laughs> Gee, uh, I don't know how to say thanks. The little, little tallow head. <laughs> <laughs> well, gee, I... The only, I, I, well, the only reason we, well, you know, us guys, we, well, <laughs> well, you deserve it, Doc. <laughs> You've been a sweet old slob. <laughs> Gee, it's going to be so lonely around here. This is a wonderful surprise, kid. Yeah, and that ain't all either, Ducky. <laughs> we saved the best surprise for the last. Okay, Teeny. Come on, kids.
but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings. Oh, boy. Then turned with a jerk. Then laying a finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rolled. He sprang to his leg, to his team, gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the sound of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, and he drove. Proceeding was transcribed. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.